Hey there, and welcome back to Tweet Trends. Today is International Disability Day, and I have a great interview for you. But before we get into that, I just want to say that the largest minority group in the world is people with disabilities. And any of us can join at any time. Like people are born into this group, as well as the fact due to accidents and just old age, many of us, if not most will end up in the category or being labeled as disabled. And with that, there are four basic categories that uh, disabilities fall under. There's intellectual, physical, sensory, and mental. Now, disability on a whole is not black and white. Just because two people have the same disability, it does not mean that they have the same experiences. So I feel like we can learn a lot from talking to just about every and anyone we meet that has been labeled disabled because there's always something to learn. So with that in mind, I wanna introduce you to my guest. His name is Derek Evans, and he is one of my oldest friends. Um, I honestly don't even know how we even became friends. I just remember you at my birthday parties all of a sudden. I don't remember us playing as kids, but you would always be at my birthday parties. Yeah, it was because of our parents. That's what it was. Yeah. And your brother used to babysit. Your brother babysit it. Used to babysit for. Um, oh, um, wow. A couple really? of times. Your brother Jimmy did that. Yeah, a couple of times. Uh huh. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, so there we have it. Now I know. It was all because of my brother being an awesome babysitter and my, our parents knowing each other that we have grown to be friends uh, pretty much forever. Uh, and, yeah, and then, you know, remember our, our dads work together. So that's, prob that's probably really, you know, what the original connection was, our dads work together, yeah. Okay, that, that makes a whole lot more sense. Yeah, okay. that does, yeah. Uh -huh. actually, I'd actually, you know what? I didn't even think about that, but that's probably what it probably really was the connection more so than anything else. The fact that they work together and we, you know, lived in the same neighborhood, so. Right. That's probably, yeah. Well, so now, Derek, I'm bringing you on the show today because okay. you are one of the people, you were not born disabled. Mm -hmm. You exactly. um, came into this group. And so if you don't mind, could you tell us a little bit about your story and um, mm -hmm. how, how this came about? Okay, what came about was um, just to uh, fast forward it a little bit. I had some complications from my diabetes that I have and um, my right foot, I was having a lot of problems with it. And um, um, I was going to the doctor and they weren't, they weren't sure what exactly what was going on with it. And um, um, gosh, like my thoughts together. I, I went through the process and it's like one day I was it's like it was giving me lots of problems, lots of problems, lots of problems. And one day I was home and um, I was feeling real bad. And um, I went to sleep and my roommate came home and she was like, she looked at me, she was like, Derek, did you, do you see the bottom of your foot? And I was like, um, no, because I can't see the bottom of my foot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was real bad. And um, I ended up going to the hospital. We, we went to the emergency room. This is uh, back in 2013, April 13th. And um, I went there and um, went back. I, you know, like I said, went into the back. They went and said, let's go do some x-rays. And then when they came back into the room, because I was having, I was dealing with a whole lot of things. And um, I didn't realize how bad my foot was infected. And actually, I was thinking that I was having some, um, I don't want to say seizures, my body was trembling and shaking. And here's the thing, with me being diabetic, I was thinking that it, it was because my sugar was low because some of the same symptoms of my sugar being low was was happening to me. I was shaking, I was trembling, I was cold, so whatever it is. So those, some of those same things was, is what happens when your um, sugar was low, but I didn't realize it was the infection that was causing that. And so, um, like I said, I was sitting there and the doctor came in the room and he saw that he um, said, um, well, um, I hate to tell you this, but we're going to have to amputate your foot in the morning. Just like that. In the morning? 
in the morning. That was that night, that was a Thursday night. He said, in the morning, we're gonna have to amputate your foot. There's nothing we can do. It's too far gone. Um, we need to do it to save your life. So it wasn't like an option, like, well, can they clean it out or what have you, anything like that, what have you. So um, it was just like that. And um, I was like, well, I'll choose life. And just, just, just that quick. And he, you know, I always have a way of looking to the brighter side of that. I'm like, you know what? I can walk again. Mm -hmm. You know, you only get one life. I can walk again. And so um, we went into it. We uh, they amputated my foot. And then it was uh, from there. And actually, I was very close. And see, this is the thing about it. When you um, get septic like that, mm -hmm. actually, you can die. And once it gets all in your body, there's nothing the doctors can do. There's nothing. There's nothing. They said we're gonna we're gonna have to amputate your foot in the morning. So I made some calls and text messages that were kind of hard to do, whatever it is. And uh, even to this day, I still feel like um, like some of my friends, some of my family doesn't make sense to you. Like they took it worse than I did. You know, they took it worse than I did. Right. And um, as a matter of fact, one of the doctors, he was um, finishing it up his, um, what do they call it, fellowship or finishing it up his thing before he became a doctor. Okay. And he's, and, and he's, I saw him about, because I was in the hospital about 50 days. So I saw him um, about a month later and he said, you know, he just, when he gave me the news, he just couldn't believe, you know, the, you know, the weight of it. He said, he didn't think I really understood. He said, then that I was three days from dying, point blank. Oh, wow. So I was three days from dying, you know. But, um, you know, I, I always had a great spirit about it because I was like, you know what, I was independent. But here's here's the thing that um, what you don't realize is that you can't do the things you used to do. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things about... Uh, you know, having a, a when, when you you know when you lose a limb like that or or, or anything like or just you know having disabilities that you know your world does change, right? And you know, unfortunately, in life sometimes you don't realize the struggle that people go through when you don't when it doesn't affect you. And we are actually in a world like that, so whatever. There's a lot of times people don't get behind causes until something happens to them, and then that's when they that's when they care about it, what have you. Right. So, um, you know, that was one of the, that was one of the hard things to realize that, you know what, you know, when you wake up in the, in the, in the, in the you know, in the middle of the night, you can't just get up and jump and go to the bathroom. And then actually there's a process that you go through even to get delayed. Cause so it's not like they amputate your foot and the next day you go in and you get molded for a foot and then, you know, a week later you're walking, you know, it doesn't work like that. Right. You have to learn to adapt. And, and, and you know, I really learned to, I really learned to uh, respect a lot of people for, like I said, who have dealt with these things their whole life, because it is a lot of work. And I simple can, things you may think that, um, you know, um, that you take for granted, you know, you, t you know, being a man, you, you just take for granted being able to go to the bathroom, stand in his bathroom, or you be able to just do different things. You take for granted to be able to walk into the refrigerator, open up the cabinets, get what you want, come back and so whatever it is, you know. And so um, it was uh, it was a struggle at first, only learning how to do the things, not struggle mentally for me, because I always, like I said, I always believed that. I knew that I was going to walk again, it was a matter of when. Right. Just a matter of when, you know. So, um, you know, but like I said, there there are just a lot of challenges that come along with it, and it makes you, like I said, just you just respect things a whole lot more. Like I said, but it is a simple thing. It's like you know, in the morning they tell you that when you do things, you gotta like you can't afford to make a lot of trips, so you have to do you know, get everything you need. You know, <laughs> I do that now just because I want time. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, Ab absolutely, I, I understand. I understand. But yeah, like I said, it was, it was, um, you know, it was, it was an interesting challenge, but you know, but I was, but, but I was up for the task, you know, and I was like, you know, it is, I'm going to, you, you know, like I said, I always had a positive outlook. 
I always had a positive outlook on it. And I think that's what helped me get through. Now I know everybody doesn't because it because it because it is hard. Right. You know. But um but um yeah, but that's what it was, like I said, so in 2013. So here's the thing. When I when they did that, now they looked at my other foot too. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, there's a possibility that they might have seen some infections, whatever it is, in that foot. And the and the doctor who did my surgery uh, then said, you know what, you might just go ahead and do the other one too, because you know what's going to happen. You might just go ahead and do it. Okay, that's what I'm a doctor. But the other doctor I had, who was who was my original doctor, so whatever it is, uh, the surgeon was different from the doctor that I had. Right. And he said, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to treat it. Here's him and the infection disease people. They said, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to treat it. We're going to give you some um, antibiotics or what have you. And we're going to see if we can save it because we're going to do the best we can. And if six months down the line, we decide that it's it's just not going to work, it's just not going to work. And then we'll do it then. But we're not going to not try. Right. He said he's like the other guy, you know, bone doctor. They stay ready to cut. They that's what they do. You know what I'm right. saying? Whatever it is. So um, I ended up. So that went a couple of years, and then what happened is part of the um, I had this other uh, thing. This is a, a disease. This is a that becomes affected by diabetes can cause. It's called Charcot's. What happens is it makes your bones brittle. Okay. And they get deformed. So. Like, so what happens is, so in my foot, my foot actually, my left foot that actually started to turn sideways, the bone end would turn sideways when I have to, okay. and it got real weak, and that's part of it, and that's why I had a brace and stuff, whatever was on it, and so um, what ended up happening when it was, it got to be so bad that the doctors just um, decided to give me, uh, uh, um, gosh, I can't think of the name of it now. I had the thing on my leg. Oh gosh, what like a fixator? That's what it's called, a fixator. It's called a fixator. And if you and if you um ever saw the you, you saw the horror movie with the guy who had the pins that was going all throughout his head, whatever. So the fixator it fits on your leg, and you got pins going all throughout or whatever. It is. That's to hold it into place. Um. And and so um so so when they quote unquote fixed my foot whatever it is to get it the last the pins and stuff were going in and out it but here's the problem the problem is that um the chant the, the problem with that is only that you can't really use a lot of soap or so whatever it is to clean it and it's like because it's going in and out and i mean um it, it's going in and out you can't um um there's always a chance that it could get infected right. that's one of the things the doctor said but the doctor said but he said you know what Let's try this," he said, um, because he, he he said, "Now, if I was about ten years or something older, whatever it is, he wouldn't even try it." Mm-hmm. You know, because I was younger, he thought I could take it to do whatever it is, and um, we did it. And the only problem with the pens and stuff is that sometimes, um, from it's hard to say to stay off it because because see, here's the problem. The problem is I have the left foot became my lead foot, right? Right, because I had the uh, you know, because and on the other side, of the leg, but on the other side, because um, and um, and, and that's something I I tell you later because we're actually, even though I have that leg there, because there's no feeling and no whatever it is, in my mind, in my mind mentally, when I get up, I always feel like my brain is always saying there's nothing there. There's always a challenge. There's always a challenge. So it's a challenge for me to get up. And walk downstairs because mentally the brain is saying that the leg is not there. You're gonna fall, right? You know, so you have to. Um, and I don't. And I know people go through things differently. So anyway, like I said, so because I was always, I learned to be dependent on the left leg, and then when I got the fixator, it's not supposed to be weight bearing. Not supposed to do whatever it is, but it's hard to do that. You know, honestly, I'm a big guy. If I mm-hmm. if I was lighter, it'd be a different thing. I'm I'm a big guy. That's true. So it's it's hard not to lean on both, especially when you're used to that. So some of the pins and stuff started to were breaking, oh, you know. Wow. And so what happened was, um, once again, I had that feeling again, and I thought that a thing, something was going on. So this is what happened. I was supposed to have the surgery to replace the pins. Mm-hmm. Went to my friend's house. We went to we, when we went in there to. 
um, the first time I had the surgery, I some of my um, blood sugar level was too high. They needed to get it down or what have you. And of course, once again, so that was a sign there of infection. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect it, whatever it is. And so um, we went back, went to the doctor. They had the test. They brought the sugar down a little bit. When I went in then, but I was just feeling so bad. Right. That was an infection again. But then I went to the emergency room. I went to the emergency room. They did the test, whatever it is. I came up to the room. My um, brother, my little brother, John, a friend of my niece, so they were in the room with me. The nurse came in because I was like thinking, okay, because see, my doctor was out of town, but he was going to let this other doctor go ahead and do it. Okay. The nurse came in the room. And the nurse said, um, said, um, well, Mr. Evans, um, you know, we're going to have surgery in the morning. Everything is going to be fine. Um, you know, since you, you know, gone through an amputation before, then, um, you, um, you know, you probably know what to do, whatever it is. Okay. This was, I want you to think about this. When she, I'm sorry, this was like 30 minutes before I'm, that wasn't in the morning. I'm probably, this is the day of. So they were there to see me before I went to surgery, whatever it is. So that 35 minutes before, that's when I found out they were amputating my leg. Wow. So I guess she thought maybe the doctors had talked. I just knew I was having surgery in the morning, but I didn't know what it was, what have you. And that's when I found out that they were going to be amputating <laughs> my leg, my other leg. Wow. So, um, I, you know, we, um, now John and, and Juanista, they were there. They just broke down. They had to walk out. They, they, both of them had to walk out the room, you know, mm -hmm. but of course, like I said, you know, just being a strong, you know, just being a person of faith. I think that's where faith came and came into play. And I'm like, you know what? I, that's exactly what I said. Just like that. I'm able to compartmentalize. And like I said, I know everybody can't do that. But um, I just said, you know what? She's right. I've been through this before, and I do it again. So um, <laughs> we did it, and um, that's where I was on that. And that was a different challenge because I had a um, different type of leg. Um, the 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 first leg I had, um, it was a leg where my leg just sat in there, but it didn't really hold in the, the, the better legs have what they call a pin lock in there and that locks your leg in or what have you. Oh. So I had to, um, so not only did I have, so, so that's now, now it's now becomes a different challenge because it's not only that, but it's like, I used to use, here's the thing. I used to use my left leg to, to step on the right leg to be able to pull it out. Now I don't have a left oh. leg. <laughs> wow. Don't have a left leg to do it. And so, um, you know, that was something else. But, you know, but I, I, I went to the physical therapy and, um, you know, we, we learned how to do things. And, you know, we went from there. But that in a nutshell, I know it's a little bit long, whatever it is. But, you know, but that's how we got there um, to... Uh, where we that's where I got to, you know, where I am. That's how I lost both my legs, you know. As far as I know, like nobody in your household had a disability like that where you were familiar with the process. So okay. did they have like advocates to walk you through the process to because you you literally went from one day your regular Derek and then exactly. the next day they're like all right time to go cut your foot off and just like that uh -huh. you know you you became disabled and then so there are benefits that they have out there to assist because I'm sure your job you know had requirements and now you don't have a foot and you have to still make a living to keep a roof exactly. over your head so how how was that process to go like was a difficult process was it it is and and, and i tell you this so here's where i was blessed where i was blessed is at the hospital that i was at they had a um uh um, company is called chamberlain 
and they work with um, patients who have um, disability. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, patients who become who are going to be candidates for it. And and the thing about them is, they don't they don't take cases unless they know that they believe that you're going to believe that you're going to win or you're going to get it, what have you. Because here's the thing: they work in concert with the hospital because ultimately. They want to get their money. You know, the hospitals have to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, hospitals, you know, they want to get paid. You know, those surgeries and stuff, they cost money. You know, they, right. they allow to stay in the room and cost money. And so they're trying to find a way to, you know, recoup their money. And get their, let's be, it's business. Let's be honest. Call it spade with spade to spade, you know. And then at that time, like I was dealing with, um, you know, I had a job and they didn't, they, they didn't have insurance. They didn't offer us insurance. And, um, and so um, to get insurance, because I was already diabetic, was um, just, you know, I didn't want to get into the insurance thing and so whatever it is. But, you know, that's, an that's, that's another horse. That's another story for another day. I want you to bring me on there so we can talk about it. Okay. This healthcare thing, because I just feel like it is, it really is a shame. And, and I think, let me just say this right here. I think that part of that, might have contributed somewhat to my situation because here's the thing when you don't have health insurance and you go to the doctor and i'm not taking anything away from a nurse practitioner so whatever it is but you don't see the doctor mm. i never saw the doctor even though you know you go first of all you go in there and they want their money right and even when they work with their money they work with you they have a plan or so whatever it is but i never saw the, I didn't see the doctor, I saw the practitioner, so whatever it is, there are times when I came in and, and you know, like I said, I don't want to go down to when I felt like she didn't do all that she could do. Yeah. I know that there was a big, let me tell you something, there was a big, when I got Medicare, or when I, well, actually I got the Affordable Care Act first, mm -hmm. when, I had, when I got that, I was able to see the doctor, it was a, it was a whole, like I said, I got to see the doctor. When they knew they could get their money, then you got they to see to get the their money. I saw the doctor, you know, and um, <laughs> I lost track. But anyway, getting back to Chamberlain, okay, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry that I got off track. I apologize. Oh, I was, no, you're good. That's something that, 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 that is, it, is dear to me right now, too, is everybody having health care. Okay, so here's the thing about Chamberlain. Chamberlain doesn't take the case unless they know that they're going to win. Right. So, and, you know, so, so I had a lot, you know, because I had a lot of decisions going on with uh, some family and friends and they're like, oh, you need to get a lawyer, this and whatever it is. And I'm like, well, I got this company right here that's, that's being an advocate for me. Mm -hmm. Like, no, they're just looking out for the hospital, blah, blah, you know. There was, that was another discussion and stuff. But anyway, and so because I was lucky that I got them and, and, and like I said, there was an advocate in the hospital who worked with me, who, who set, it, set it up with me with them. And usually they tell you when it comes down to disability, which I don't understand, that they usually say it could take around two years. It usually takes, you usually get rejected two times, two or three times. Now, here's the thing. To appease my family, I did actually call a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And what they said was, have you been um, denied? To the, they're like, if, you, if I wasn't even denied two times, they weren't even going to take the case mm -hmm. yet. They weren't even going to wow. take, take it yet. Yeah. And so, um, so, um, that was that. So the first time we went through the process, what have you, and it was denied. Mm -hmm. Right. Really? Yes. Really. Amputated, whatever it is, it was denied. And um, like the whole process, like I really just don't understand. And then we went through the process again. I went, um, I had to go see one of their doctors. The doctor saw me. And um, the second time, I got approved, which is, like I said, that is almost basically unheard of. So I was lucky, but I promise you, most people, it takes them around two years or so, whatever it is, two to three years. And that's, you know, that, and I don't know how they expect people to live that long right. or be dependent on people or what have you. And, um, and so um, that is, that's how that process normally works. So I was lucky. That um, it only took me about nine months. I was not only lucky, I was blessed. 
And then after I did that and got the money, and then I was able to, you know, uh, regain somewhat of my independence. Right. You know, you know but, um, but yeah, but usually, like I said, that process, normally it could take anywhere from two, three, I've heard people wait four or five years. And um, it used to be where they got a, you know, people were talking about how they get these large sums or so whatever. So now they've changed that. They don't, they don't do it like it used to be. Mm-hmm. Now they only work a couple of years, what have you. Like I said, like you don't have bills occurring or what have you. But um, but that's normally how the process works. Like I said, it's not easy. Like I said, I was blessed. That's what I had to work with me to get, you know, they connected me to that company. So that's how I was able to get my um, disability faster. But normally it does not work that fast. Wow. That is amazing. Like that, that blows me away to think that, mm-hmm. especially if just looking at your story on the surface to say yeah. that you went literally just to the hospital to find out why am I not feeling okay. That's right. That's to right. Then coming out, mm-hmm. having your foot amputated, and then you still have to work up to the point where you can receive a leg. Mm-hmm. You know, you you, That's right. you don't get the foot immediately after right. having the surgery. Right. And so what are you really supposed to do in the time being? I, that makes yeah. no sense to me. Mm-hmm. Wow. How can we help? Because clearly there's a problem with this whole process. Um. You're right. I think we have to put pressure on our on the people that we elect to do the job for us. Mm-hmm. I think that that's what it really comes down to. That we have to. It's like voting is not enough, and I think that's where a lot of us fail sometimes. That, like I said, we vote people in, we 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 elect them, and then we go on about our life. Mm-hmm. And then two years, four years later, two, two years it was your congressman, four years later. You run for president six years, every six years for your senators, what have you. But um, we have to stay involved and look at things. Sometimes you have to look at things that are greater than yourself. You know, right. we have to care about things that's just, you know, that doesn't affect us. And it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard. But I think that's the biggest thing I can tell you that, that, that we can do is we just have to continue to put those pressure on and put those people in there who are going to be advocates for us. You know, and, and and like I said, the the larger problem is, I think our uh, our healthcare system in general. Right. That's really the larger problem. You know, and why we don't feel like healthcare. I don't want to get us so but why I don't feel like healthcare should be a right, but it should be because you know, you know, I can I can look at it, I can tell you yes that um you know. I'm blessed and, and and I know that I have the faith and I believe that, you know, that that I'm here for uh, a, a bigger purpose. I know that God meant for me to be an example so that other people can do. And and and, and I realized that actually um, my first thought was, you know, when these things happen to some people, my first thought, sometimes people say, well, why God? And I said, why not me? I didn't say why not, um, you know, I didn't say that. I said, well, you know, I'm happy that thank you for choosing me because so I can be a light for somebody else. You know, but um, I just, like I said, I think the biggest thing we could do is as far as the politics, you know, we have to look at our politicians. We have to uh, 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 look at our healthcare system in general. And don't get me wrong. I think that what really happened with the system as far as the disability goes is that it was abused so many, so many years ago. People had good friends in the system, whatever it is, to write them off and and so there are a lot of things that need to be corrected there. Mm-hmm. And what happens is, unfortunately, in system like this, is that the good have to suffer with the bad. So, so they look, you know. So I, I don't know why the system takes as long as it does. Because to me, like I said, I don't see anything that I'm like, I don't see anything different. The doctor who said I was or said I should get it was had the same notes that the last doctor had. Right. You know what I'm saying, don't you? So but that's, that's so I don't understand hour. who, you know, so I, I, I think that the people, if I'm not, I'm not mistaken, the people who look at it and determine it, you know, they look at the paperwork and determine, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what goes, but somewhere along the lines of that system right there, as far as that goes, but it's just strange. And like I said, because nothing changed. The only thing that changed was time. 
that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like I said, the doctors had the same notes. So I think that ultimately, you know, like I said, we just have to put people in there who, who really care and who really look at, you know, uh, uh, what, what's going on, you know, but that, that's probably the biggest thing we can do, you know, right. in, our, in our own little bubbles, you know. Well, I thank you for sharing your story with us today. And um, hopefully we can all find a way to um, take part in trying to make this system and this process work for the people that it needs to work for. My thing is, if you don't have a strong enough support system, then, then, what, then what happens to you, you know? Right, exactly. You know, you know, I thank God that I had my friends. I love all of y'all who, who, who I, you know, I was able to reach out and, and, and help me out at various times. And it was hard. To, and, and that's one of the things, too. When you're a very independent person, and I think that's the difference between, like you said, being born with a disability mm -hmm. and not having, and, and then becoming disabled. Because, because I'm self-sufficient and because I'm, I believe in being a helper, that it's hard for me to receive help right it's hard and that's one of the biggest challenges that once you become disabled and you realize that you know what the problem is that you can't do all the things you used to do right. now, as much as you want to be independent and you don't want people to feel like people are pitying you or so whatever when they're trying to help you and that's what then that's a thin line right there even that's a thin line between because i know one of the biggest questions people always wanted to is that how do you help somebody who's disabled, because you don't want to feel like you're patronizing. You don't want to seem like, you know, like, you know, they can't do whatever it is, but then at the same time, you know, you can't be that prideful either. Right. You know, I, I have to tell you this story now. Here I am, when I, this one, I didn't have my foot. I didn't have my foot. Mm -hmm. John and um, Eric, it came in, Eric it came into town. Him and my brother, uh, John, they took me to this place in Batesburg called Shirley's, privacy place, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so one now I tell you one of the good things about when you're disabled now you get you ain't got to stand in line they get front of line privileges so whatever it is right? right but here's the thing right it is a buffet great food great southern buffet what have you right so here we are in line I'm in my chair get me out of the car whatever it is I'm in my chair whatever it is they said Derek do you want me to help you I said, nah man I got it. I got it. Don't worry about that. You know what I'm saying? Now, think, now think about this. Now, how, I'm, how, I'm, how am I going to roll, my, roll myself, hold the plate and do whatever it is, or, or hold the plate and roll? And what I didn't realize is that, okay, because I didn't have my right leg to sit down, so when I try to put my plate on my leg, it's going down like that. I couldn't do it. I have to roll and struggle, whatever it is, right? And I was like, okay, now I learned. And um, I learned that I have, that you know what? I can't do everything I used to do. Mm -hmm. It was our opening experience. And it was funny. I used to tell people all the time, I used to help them. I said, look, they'll be like, you have to learn how to accept the blessing, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing about it was I couldn't accept the blessing right. myself. Because right. somehow or another, I felt like, for some reason, I felt like I still had to prove that I can still do the same thing that I used to do, whatever it is, which is, you know, sometimes it's it's not the same thing. So, I mean, that there, there's a line. There really is a line. And even now, even now, it's kind of hard sometimes. I'm realizing that, like I said, I have to accept that. You know, we go play sometimes. We used to have things at the church when we could go to church, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I get there and sometimes, you know, the... Uh, lines along and I sat down, whatever it is, I'm waiting. And then sometimes, you know, a lot of the ladies and people, so whatever it is, Derek, don't worry about it. We got you. You know what I'm saying? We got you. Just, just have a seat over there and back knock and stand like that. No, sit down over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got you. Right. We got you. You ain't got to, you ain't got to do that. You ain't got to do that, whatever it is. And, you know, so it's like, that's something that you do have to learn. What you can and what you can't do. God grant me serenity. You know what I'm saying? But I have to accept you know, and, and that's a, I think that's the biggest challenge, mm -hmm. really. Like I said, being opposed to not being, is that you have to realize that and you have to be okay with asking for help. Right. You know, so, 
I know I went off. I don't even know what the original question was, but <laughs> that's perfectly I don't know how I got fine. there. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Anyway. That's perfectly fine. Thank you so much for for sharing your story and being so transparent about the ins and outs, the ups and downs of uh, becoming disabled, and you know how you have allowed your faith and your uh, family to get you through it, as well as, you know, your, your determination, which is, is pretty fierce as well. Um, so I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for having me.